Hey guys, so yesterday Tesla and Elon Musk released the uh, details of what's going to be the upgrades and new features on Autopilot version 8 and uh, also a little bit of 8.1 and that happened yesterday which I've been super excited about and I've been trying and trying to get to, to, to uh, to uh, complete this video and uh, get it out, but I haven't been able to. Yesterday I spent several hours doing a video on it, um, actually while I was reading it in real time for the first time, finding out what the features was. Um, but I could not get it to encode and I couldn't get it to upload right. I tried to do it on my phone, but my phone is really small, so I ran out of memory. So finally I've got a couple extra minutes, so I wanted to do a, um, just kind of an overview and uh, some thoughts on uh, what I think is really cool about the new autopilot features. So, uh, the big deal, and I think why this ended up as a press release instead of just a, um, you know, an upgrade that we all got, was uh, the radar and the drastic improvements that Tesla was able to do with processing radar data. Um, <clears throat> so, one of the things that sort of come out with the um, with the uh, news of the fatal uh, crash in Florida involving a, a Model S that was on um, autopilot, although um, insufficiently supervised by its driver, uh, was that like you know why didn't why didn't the systems detect like a large truck going across the way and all this kind of stuff? And it comes down to the the tricky thing with radar apparently in driving systems is that it's preventing it from uh, false positives. So. Um, Certain objects, uh, like apparently concave metal surfaces, like the bottom of a tin can or a soda can, I mean, um, it kind of magnifies or um, makes the radar signal look bigger than it actually is and tells the system, like, big objects here, you need to avoid it. But you don't want your car to come to a grinding halt uh, because of a tin can or soda can on the freeway. That's pretty bad and very injurious. So. Uh, historically, the radars have been used as sort of a backup or a confirmation um, set of data to the other analyses, like uh, the image camera and stuff like that. Um, but Tesla has been able to take the um, radar data and do some pretty crazy things with it. Key to that is apparently the maker is Bosch. Bosch makes the radar unit that's in the front and they were able to give uh, Tesla additional drivers to the hardware so that they could have access to uh, more raw data. And if you're familiar with using raw files, um, like in the um, digital media world, you know that there's just there's just a whole level of, um, uh, not nuances, but there's, there's multiple layers of data that can be used to extrapolate or interpolate um, additional information from what appears to be a static uh, set of data. Um, so the data becomes larger, significantly larger, but it's it's much more useful and um, almost magical some of the stuff that they've been able to do. Um, so part of that is uh, what Elon has mentioned before, which is uh, temporal smoothing, which is uh, technology and processing, but that's beyond me, but it sort of involves the radar sends out signals um, rapidly over time and in a, since the radar is moving the signals it gets back are going to be slightly different um, per unit of time so uh, taking taking that temporal data those temporal changes and then using that to help basically map um, a 3d image of its environment something that was generally left to imaging stuff or lidar or something like that from the raw data from the radar, they're actually able to reconstruct that a little bit more, well, apparently quite a bit more accurately. Uh, for solid objects, uh, metal, wood, that kind of thing, and large objects, apparently it doesn't work with um, soft things like humans. They're, well, at least not yet, because the radar can see them, but they're uh, translucent. Um, so that's, probably it's not gonna be uh, good for detecting um, uh, pedestrians and stuff um, but for other you know most objects on the road that you want to avoid hitting be besides living beings are quite solid uh, rather than fluffy um, so that's going to be super cool um, and 
the other thing that's really neat is that they're going to be integrating that into with uh, fleet learning uh, so that the objects that radar is unsure about um, and the system as a whole can't confirm whether uh, good or not or good or bad it's it's going to um, you know if several Teslas go by that and they don't die the system will learn that and recognize and basically say like okay that thing at this point at these GPS points that's that's okay we don't need to worry about that and then um, it won't have it won't have false positives there uh, so that is that is super super cool so and it's worth noting here that the uh, the fleet learning aspect is a, aside from Google it's a component of um, well even with Google Google's isn't quite real-world data it is, it is it kind of is but it's not as extensive but um, the, I think the, the fleet learning that Tesla is able to have is like just as important as like the sensors that it's using so the camera the ultrasonics and the radar the learning from other cars passing by other stuff is super super important for real-time updates you know where what lanes are being closed like what kind of um, you know if several Teslas are, are you know if everybody's going around something you, you know lane must be closed or something like that right so um, incorporating that data into the actual imaging data is is um, going to be really awesome um, and on the side to that, Musk's, Musk said that he anticipates that kind of fleet learning to uh, greatly increase or um, greatly add to the autopilot abilities in the future, more so for the current vehicles with the current hardware um, than software updates per se, because it, you know with this new, with the increase in raw data that they're processing with the radar systems and stuff. Um, they're approaching the limit of what's possible with the computational systems in the current cars. Now that won't be true with um, next generation once they start upgrading that hardware, but for now, you know, there's only so much that the current computers can do. Um, but all that to say, the fleet learning goes on. Um, and, and, um, and, and the smarter the fleet data is like that that's independent of the computer the local uh, vehicles hardware so that will continue to improve um, let's see I'm looking at the blog post right now just to remind myself of some uh, talking points oh yeah he did mention that like going uh, going a dip down when there's a, like, like an overhead bridge and the road goes down under it the it's very difficult for the car um, with its local sensors to detect that that's not actually a life-threatening object but with fleet learning it's very obvious because no cars crash into an overhead um, uh, overpass and so they're all going under and so all the fleet data is saying no problems here so that's pretty cool now he also they're also going to incorporate um, more active uh, full braking events so if the system detects a collision is 99.99% probable, um, braking will increase to full strength. Um, and they mentioned this won't entirely prevent collisions, but at least the impact speed will be reduced, which that's, that can be just as important sometimes. Yeah, and that's independent of the camera, independent of weather, So because the radar will work through um, rain, uh, snow, fog, all that stuff, in contrast to LiDAR. Uh, so that's that's really awesome. Another super cool tweak that they've done to the radar is that it will now actually so some of the radar signals if you're following a car will will sort of do a bounce pass underneath uh, the front car or the car in front of you and then um, will hit something in front of the car in front of you and then bounce back and give you a, a different data set. So the cars will now be able to um, detect uh, obstacles in front of the car that you're following which is really awesome because that is definitely a limitation of the current autopilot and even uh, traffic aware cruise control as far as I'm aware no other car is able to do this they're they're pretty the systems are pretty much limited to following the car uh, that's right in front of it and that's not cool because we've we've seen videos um, where you know the Tesla's following a car and then the, the the pacer car, I'll call it, you know, turns off to avoid an obstacle. Well, now it's now it's you know too late. Now, boink, 
know, there it is. But so in the future, though, with the upgrades here, the radar data will inform the car of what's um, in front of the pacer car, which is super, super cool. I'm really looking forward to that and having that. And we'll also be able, be able to anticipate, um, you know, braking a little bit better in traffic conditions so it can do it more smoothly. Um, which is also kind of a limitation of the current build of autopilot is if you want the smoothest ride, you know, humans can anticipate things a little bit better, um, you know, farther out. As a result, autopilot, autopilot can be a little bit uh, jerky, particularly if you're, if you're not following a vehicle, but like there's like a stopped vehicle or a really slow vehicle 100 yards ahead. It takes a while for autopilot to actually see that vehicle and actually slow down, and then it can be kind of abrupt. So let's go through the actual features. Um, traffic aware, cruise control, braking max, ramp rate increased, and latency reduced. That means, so basically it's gonna be able to brake faster um, and stronger. Uh, controls for two cars ahead using radar echo. Very nice, we just talked about that. Oh, okay, here's cool, something cool. We'll take highway exit if the indicator is on. We knew that was gonna come or if the nav system is active, uh, which, and that'll be an 8.1. So I nailed it in my previous video um, with my hopes on this system. So what that's saying is that if, if you have navigation activated and the nav system is saying, you know, we need to merge onto this freeway, the car will take that interchange by itself. You don't have to use the indicator. That's awesome. Okay, car offsets in lane when overtaking a slower vehicle. Uh, that makes sense. You don't want the car to stay between the lines too much if the car next to you is too close. Uh, interface alerts are much more prominent. Okay, so it's gonna really get your attention. Improve cut-in detection using blinker on the vehicle ahead. Um, so that means that if somebody's cutting into you, uh, cutting, cutting in front of you, as long as they have their blinker on, which excludes about 50% of the population, uh, it will um, I guess it will negotiate that better. Reduced likelihood of overtaking in right lane in Europe. Okay. Improved auto lane change availability. Car will not allow re-engagement of auto steer until parked if user ignores repeated warnings. We knew that was coming. Oh, one more thing while we're talking about auto steer. Um, oh, okay. Automatic braking will now amplify user braking in emergency. Good. Um, my Volt used to do that. Like if it sensed that I was like braking hard, it would amplify that brake force to really stop the car. So I'm not sure why it wasn't doing that already. The Teslas, I mean. Okay, now here's, here's what I wanted to get to. In manual mode, it will alert the driver. Oh, no, not this one, the next one. In manual mode, it'll alert the driver if, it's, if the car is gonna drift off the road and no torque on the steering wheel has been detected since auto steer was deactivated. This is important because um, a couple of users apparently have not realized that auto steer was not on or something like that, and then, you know, you think your car is going to correct the, the uh, trajectory, but it's actually not engaged. So this will help warning, like, you know, hey, buddy, pay attention. Okay, here we go. With further data gathering, car will activate auto steer to avoid collision when the probability is about 100%. That's crazy. This is this is really new. Um, so the car will actually actively steer to avoid a collision or at least mitigate it uh, when the probability is 100%. Obviously the probability of an accident is not always 100%, so the, the human you know, needs to be taking the initiative to, like not relying on that, but that's awesome that that's gonna be activated. So, um, and hopefully the first time that that is used, there will be no injuries, but it will be super interesting to see the first time that that gets used and uh, the dash cams. Um, which, you know, it, the dash cams are cool, but I kind of wish they were mounted a little bit farther back so you could see like the instrument panel and stuff. Anyway, curve speed adaptation now uses fleet learned roadway curvature. I thought it already did that and I thought it just wasn't that good at it, but. Uh, maybe it's going to be in full force now, and that'll be awesome because the best way for the car to know how fast to go is how fast previous cars have gone, right? On on curves. And then some 200 small additional enhancements that aren't worth a bullet point. So that's it. Um, I think it's pretty exciting. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I think it's going to come later this month. 
my car is not always the early, well, it's often not the earliest to get these updates, so that's kind of a bummer, but as soon as I get it, I will be wanting to check out some of this stuff, so stay tuned. I um, hope this wasn't too long, and um, hope it was interesting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.